Welcome to my lecture online. To make things a little bit more interesting, we're taking the very same problem we did on the previous video, but with a slight twist. The ball now comes in at an angle. Notice we have the x-axis, the y-axis, the z-axis, and the ball comes in at an angle relative to the z-axis. So the velocity component along that's along the x-axis is going to be v sine theta, and the velocity component along the z-axis is going to be v cosine of theta. Notice that this is the opposite side to the angle, this would be the adjacent side to the angle, because you can see that this vector here would be the same as this vector here. So this here would be the v cosine theta. All right, we still have the moment of inertia of the solid disk being one half times the mass times the radius squared, where the mass of the disk is four times small m. We're still trying to find the final omega, the final angular velocity of the disk, and the impulse of the bearings on the disk, but now we need to find the component in the x direction and in the z direction to find the total impulse of the bearings onto the disk. So again, we're going to start with the same concept that L initial equals L final, meaning the moment of inertia initial, or I should say the angle of momentum initial equals the angle of momentum final. And the angle of momentum is going to be I omega 1 initial, that would be the ball, plus I omega uh, 2 initial, that would be that for the disk, that equals I1 plus I2 times omega final, because, oop, I don't need this final thing right here, all right? Because we're trying to find omega final. That's what we're looking for. And again, since the disk starts with initial omega equal to zero, we can go ahead and set that equal to zero, which means that omega final is equal to I1, omega one initial, all divided by I1 plus I2. And then coming up here to complete that, we can then say that omega final of the disk is equal to I1 omega 1 for the ball with mass m, that hat mass m, and that would be equal to, well, it would be the parallel component or the tangent component to here, that would be V sine theta, so it's mvr, so we do mass times V times R, so it would be m v r, and v is going to be v times the sine of theta times r. So that would be the angular, or the, yeah, the angular velocity, not the angular velocity, but it would be the angular momentum of the ball coming in at an angle divided by the total moment of inertia of the two. So it would be divided by uh, the moment of inertia of the ball would be m r squared plus the moment of inertia of the disk, which is 2m r squared. We calculated that over here. Add the two together. So we have omega final is equal to uh, m v r times the sine of theta divided by one of these and two of these. That would be 3m r squared. And yes, we can simplify things a little bit. The m's cancel out, one of the r's cancel out and that would be one-third v over r times the sine of theta omega final equals one-third v over r times the sine of theta, which means we get the same answer as before, except for the difference. We have the sine of theta uh, difference between what we have here versus what we had previously. Notice when the angle goes to 90 degrees, the sine of 90 is one, we end up back with the answer we had on the previous video, when the angle goes to zero degrees, then sine of zero is zero, and omega final would still be zero because the ball would then hit the disk perpendicular to the side and it would not cause the disk to rotate. So that's the correct answer seemingly. Now we need to find the impulse on the bearings on the disk and we need to take one direction at a time. So let's first start out with this component right here. So we're going to do it along the x direction. So impulse, along the x direction is equal to, that would be the change in the linear momentum, which is m times the change in v, which is equal to m times v final minus v initial. All right, what's v final? 
Well, V final can be found from omega final. Remember that the relationship between V and omega is that V is equal to R times omega. So in this case, if we want to find V final, we multiply omega final times R. And so we get the following. So this is equal to M times V final, which would be omega final times R. The R's would cancel out. That would be one third V sine theta minus V initial and V initial would be V sine theta, I believe, is that correct? Uh, v sine theta, that would be in the x direction. Yes, that would be V times sine theta. And so notice that is uh, one third, we can, we, can, uh, we can factor out a V sine theta, so this is equal to M V sine theta times one third minus one. That would be equal to minus two thirds m v sine theta. So that would be the moment of inertia on the ball by the disc, because it's slowing down, it's changing the momentum of the ball. And so therefore, I sub x of the bearings, the impulse of the bearings on the disc would be the negative of that. So that would be equal to the positive 2 thirds m v sine theta. Now I still need to find the impulse in the z direction. So that would be based on the component v cosine theta here. And so we can then say that i in the z direction, that would be equal to the change in the linear momentum, would be equal to m times the change in the velocity in the z direction, which is equal to m times v final minus v initial in the z direction. So notice that the final V in the Z direction is going to be zero because it's going to hit, hit the disc and it's not going to cause the disc to rotate. So the perpendicular component is not going to make a change in the velocity for the disc. So the V final is going to end up being zero in the Z direction and V initial is going to be V cosine theta. So we can say that I in the z direction, the impulse in the z direction is equal to the mass times V final, which is zero, minus V initial, which is V times the cosine of theta. And so we can say that I in the z direction is equal to a minus MV cosine theta. And then of course, that is on the ball then we want I, Z of the bearing. So this is the impulse from the disc onto the ball because the ball is being stopped, but that causes an impulse on the bearings back in the disc in the opposite direction. So it's gonna be the negative of this, which is equal to M, V times the cosine of theta. Now to find the total impulse, since they are acting at angles 90 degrees to, to one another, we, what we need to do then is to say i total is going to be equal to the square root of i sub x squared plus i sub z squared. I know that I'm running out of room, but let me try to finish here. So this is equal to the square root of this quantity squared, which is um, 4 ninths m squared v squared times the sine squared of theta. Let me go ahead and do it like this and then plus this component squared, which is m squared v squared times the cosine squared of theta. Hmm. So now what I could do is I could add a 5 ninths and subtract a 5 ninths. So let's try that. So this is equal to the square root of m squared v squared sine squared theta, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out an mv. So let me try that. I'm going to factor out an m squared v squared. So I'm going to, this is equal to mv, I hope you can see that, times, I'm going to make that the sine squared theta plus the cosine squared theta. And of course I did that by adding a 5 ninths, I have to subtract from that a 5 ninths sine squared theta. So what I've done here is I've added a 5 ninths 
sine squared theta and subtracted a 5 times squared theta so I can combine these two and make that into a 1. So I total is therefore equal to m times v times the square root of 1 minus 5 over 9 sine squared theta. And that's ultimately the total impulse, of course, make sure we understand this is the impulse of the bearing onto the disc to stop the ball when the angle of, of incidence is theta, the direction of the velocity is theta relative to the z-axis. And that's how we find the impulse of the bearing onto the disc, as well as the final omega of the disc after the ball hits the side of the disc. And that is how it's done.